All right, so what we're doing today is we're making a stew with a Dutch oven. This is a Dutch oven. Some of you who camp through Canada go camping out in the mountains and they actually carry this very heavy Dutch oven on your back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a vegan meal in this Dutch oven. Come and watch how I put this together. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living! We're also going to add these charred stems and some of the charred leaves. An eggplant that's coarsely chopped. The stew is all going to be inside of olive oil, garlic and basil. Bertolini makes the most delicious fast tomato paste or tomato sauce. I just love it. In addition, we're going to cut these um, acorn squash. And how do you say that in French, Mom? Okay, so now you have the, the French translation of acorn squash. We'll be washing these and cutting them and using large chunks. Now why large chunks? Well the reason is a lot of you are backpacking and what you want to do is get a good bite of this stew and you want to be fed. You don't want to be going around and have these little microscopic foods. Okay, so that's what it's, this, this stew is going to be large. All right, this is a pre-seasoned uh, Dutch oven. It's been baked in the oven. I used olive oil. So a lot of people use canola oil. I figure this is going to be baking my food. I want it to taste with a food, an oil that I like. But there's many different oils, oils that you can use. There's no real t hard reason about it. This one just works for me. Okay. In case you're curious, this is the Lodge. It was done in the United States and it's as 800L. Ah, it's 5 quarts or 4.7 liters. Nice to have the box right there. Alright, so let's get started. It's going to take time to cut the vegetables. So what do we need to put in first? The sauce. The sauce will not take any time at all to make. Now I'm going to use, put some water in here and get as much of the ingredients out of here. So of course if you're out there backpacking you'll be using your fresh water that you're carrying in. Some of you have camping stoves. At the time I decided to do this, I'm going to emulate this stove as going to be my camping stove. It's not going to exactly be the same, but it'll be close. I'm putting it on high because first it takes some time for the Dutch oven, the cast iron dust oven, to, to get hot. We leave it on hot. As soon as it starts bubbling, we bring it down to gas number five, or what I call medium. All right, we're going to leave that alone. Oh, sometimes what makes it go faster is to use the top. See, it's a lodge. Okay, next thing we do, two dollar knife. Make sure that you take all the edges off the hit. That way you have a nice, nice cut. And then I have learned to take the edges off. Just the way I was done. Some of you have been saying, well, why waste it? This is just the way I was taught. If you're taught not to waste any of the edges of your onion, don't do it that way. Do it the way you, or whoever taught you. Well, I don't like this all this dry paper type of skin on top of the onion. Now there's going to be some segments of this video where I become quiet. I'm going to be zipping that through. That way you don't have to watch me peel an onion or cut the different things I have. It'll make it easier so we can get to the meat of, of what you're cooking here. Okay, so we'll see you in a little bit.
See? Now reduce it from high to five. Now it's a little bit harder on a campfire stove to do this. So raise up the cast iron pan if you can so it's not so close to the fire. Just like in, we're going to add onions to it. You can see there's a lot of onions. I normally like to add these to the bottom and add the sauce to it. The onions give a wonderful flavor. I'd like to say I grew this in my garden, but I grew it at the grocery store. Okay. We put this, the cover back on. And the cast iron is already hot, so it doesn't even need to be at medium. Well, I'm going to move it to gas range number three, or two drops. So you might have to raise this up to quite a bit. So you just you want it to simmer, but you don't want to boil. Now these stems are charred stems. This stem, um, my garden isn't making charred anymore, and so I got this at the store. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, these have already been washed. We're just going to cut into yeah, roughly three quarters of an inch or even larger if you want, pieces. Now these are hard, they take over an hour of cooking time before they get soft enough for you to eat them. So put them in a the sauce first. Even the leaves. And I'll show you those in a minute. The one thing you learn about chard is if you ever grow in a garden, you're going to have so much chard, it's going to be coming out of your ears. Well, that is a saying, right? But you're going to have a lot of chard. You have to find ways to eat it. And putting this in the soup adds so many good minerals and vitamins that you don't normally get in your food. Now, if you're worried about equal to cooking, try to, no, that was no good. Try to cut them at least the same, oh, here's a leaf. We'll cut the leaf away. So you try to cut them the same size. So if you're cutting all of an inch, cut them all, cut them all an inch. Today we're using three quarters of an inch, but it gives you an idea. If you make a mistake, it's, it's just gonna disappear. No, we don't, we don't need that. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so one way you could do it is add a little bit more sauce. This is vine ripe traditional pasta sauce. It tastes very much like this Bertolini sauce and it'll give it a little bit more moisture for the meal. While the Bertolini sauce was full of flavor, this is the same thing. It's just it does has a lot more of a water content. And we're gonna take the lid off, get that saved. Okay, so we'll mix it in. And just simply push the greens below the, the surface. 
the greens take an hour to cook. Notice how bright green they are. You want them to be dark green when you're ready. So you're just putting them in right now. For me, California time, it's six o'clock. So by seven, they'll be ready. All right, so if you watch my channel, you know that I can't stand stickers on vegetables. So take the stickers off. Now take the, uh, the, the end of both sides of your... Now, this is a female. A male is really spread out. A female uh, eggplant is going to have a lot less seeds. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this. We're going to at least add an inch size slices. If you're not sure, you just, you just kind, of, kind of look in your mind and say, that looks like an inch, and cut it about the same size all the way through. Now, I don't usually use this portion because I think it's got the Despite, I peel that off on the edge here, and then I stick it in a pot. Some people have told me that they use it. Well, if you use, you eat the, the, that portion, then I think you should do it. It's just something I, I learned, okay? So, yeah, that's not an inch. Okay, so we're gonna make large pieces, so we're gonna put uh, three at a time and cut them like this. If you cut them much smaller, what's going to happen is they're just going to vanish in this too. And this way you'll be able to enjoy them when you take a really good bite of this. And they'll have the tomato flavor too. We're going to put these slices on our plastic mat that we can carry. On these bigger pieces, cut them like this. In thirds and in half again. Still have something large, a good sized bite. Now this is a soft vegetable, so most likely it'll just vanish. Some of it will vanish in your stew. I really like eggplants, they're part of the nightshade family. Provide a lot of good things for your body. Put it in. Get to wash this one. Okay, then try to put the, the sauce all over it. Just put it in the sauce. Now, normally, what I do is I keep the eggplant for last because it cooks the fastest. As noticed, the egg, the, we have over two-thirds of the pot cooked, full of delicious vegan vegetables. Which, think about it, all vegetables are vegan, so I'm just kind of playing with you here. Right, we're going to try to put one more of these, which is the acorn squash. Use a meat tenderizer. Now, don't do this to your $50 knife. This knife only costs two dollars. Don't come back and, and blame me if you cut and damage the blade. You see these little marks here? That's from me hitting the blade. Now scoop up the seeds.
why such large pieces? Well, if you're really cooking over a fire, you don't want to be touching a small little piece of acorn squash to figure out if it's cooked or not. A big piece is going to instantly tell you the fork goes right through it, it's cooked. Plus you've been walking around all day long in the beautiful nature and everything else and you're going to be hungry for a big piece. Okay, so you're checking your campfire, in this case the stove, and all the ingredients are in place. Now if you're using a campfire, you're going to need a much bigger spoon than this. So make sure you get yourself one of these giant soup spoons so that you can find them at the, uh, for example, I, I shop at Sam's Club in the, in the kitchen area, the kitchen aisle. And next time I show you this, I will do it outside with a giant spoon so you know what kind of appliance you, you should bring. Okay, so this, now we're just going to leave this the way it is. In about 35 minutes to 40 minutes, it should be ready. All right, so we'll see you then. All right, you can see that the level of liquid is about two-thirds of the pot, or in this case, the cast iron. If you want to cook it a little more, put more. You can see this is arrowhead water, but you're probably carrying this in your backpack anyway or something similar. And so just fill it in. It's not going to dilute it that much and it's going to give a chance for your stew to cook faster. I can already see. You see how this one, this is an eggplant, how it looks nice red. Now that's about two-thirds ready. But the squashes are not ready, so you want to push them down into the soup so they have a chance to come out. And if you grab from the very bottom like I'm doing now, you're going to be bringing up some of the onions, which is good too. All right, so the squash is the butter, not the, the eggplants is ready to eat. But you see how the vegetables here are still green, so the chard isn't ready yet. And the squash that we put in the, um, see it's really very, very hard, so it's going to need some time to go in too. Of course, it would have been better if all the ingredients had been put in at the same time, and now it probably would have been ready. Alright, so the stew took exactly 15 minutes longer. If you can see, this is perfectly cooked. This is a piece I got to the bottom. The fork goes down, and that's how you know. Now, I'm sure you're wondering that I didn't put any, any herbs or sauces in it. I basically consider this to be a, like an Italian stew. So if you add with you when you're going camping, Italian seasoning, that takes care of it. Which is why I use the Bertolini Italian sauce. This already had oil, basil, and garlic in it. So there's no reason to go add anything to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it off the, the burner. And might I tell you, the stove top is going to need some cleaning. But, you know, that's just, that's worth it. Now there's a lot here, plenty of it. We're going to have to let it cool in a different pan. Because if you leave it in here, it will just continue cooking. So now we're turning off the stove. Now this is a giant bowl. See, let's see, what, oh, I can't read it anymore. I've had it for quite a while. Okay, and that's what I do is when I cook something, let's see if we can move the bowl without burning myself. Now I'm gonna transfer everything in this pot, in this one, and I'm gonna let it cool before I actually taste it, and also before I put it away, most importantly. Take a huge ladle like this. You don't want one with, with, with the holes in it because you want to capture the juice. And just simply fill it, get it out of this pot because the more it cooks, you don't want it to be slush or mush. <clears throat> you don't want it to be mush. Alright, so this is just a sample of what the stew looks like. 
and I'm going to show you up close. See how the forks go in easily? That's what you want. Okay, so this over here is the squash. It's really, really hot. And it has an aroma of the squash. Um, but the better than that, it's got the taste of that spaghetti sauce that you put in. And over here, this is the eggplant. I left the skin on. Now, a lot of people don't like eggplant skin. If you're one of those people, peel it off. Though it has a lot of, of good qualities to it. Oh, it's just perfect. Oh, well, here's an onion that actually managed to stay semi old. And it's quite good too. So if you've been hiking in the mountains in one hour in a Dutch oven, of course, if you transport a stove on your back, then you'll be easily be able to make this meal an hour. Now, obviously, if you're doing it on a camp stove, let's say at a much higher altitude than say California, which is basically at sea level, it's gonna take a lot more time. But this is still a stew that you could make for a large group of people and have plenty of food on hand. And I'll be making something similar to that very soon in my patio, outside, in the cold, just to emulate what you guys are going through. We really do appreciate you watching LD Vegan Living and thanks so very much for watching us. Have yourself a wonderful camp, have yourself a very good hike. Enjoy your food and we'll see you soon. Mm. All right, so what did I get from uh, making this huge stew? I got dinner, plus I got five bags, which are pr practically all full. What I'll be doing is freezing them si sideways like this, and then it'll have five meals. And I won't be eating these every single night, but it's a really good quick meal for when I'm really tired coming back from all the things I have to do. If you're on the road, you could actually get away with something like that. You might be able to put it in a plastic container and have it the next day for lunch. And if you work, wrap it carefully, it might even retain some of its heat. Well, that's the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.